Abu Dhabi Dude! Hi there, this is Abu Dhabi Dude! Welcome back! And it's a road trip day today. Um, and we're taking a different direction from the previous two. Last time we did the west coast, well, both road trips we've done along the west coast of Scotland. Today we're headed off to the east coast. Oh, keep your hands on the wheel. Um, yeah, we're off up to a place called the House of Dunn. It's a sort of stately home with a nature reserve. It's owned by the National Trust of Scotland. And, uh, and yeah, we're headed up there. Uh, it's a 300 mile round trip. So it does obviously involve a recharge. And today, interestingly, we're doing a bit of a gamble because uh, we're not going to do ABC today. We are not going to be always be charging on the way there, which is brave. Some might say stupid, but let's go for brave. Um, and yeah, we're going to see if we can make it on a single charging stop. Uh, to be honest, this is a bit of an experiment. It's not something I would really choose to do normally. I mean, that's a lot of driving. I've learned that over previous road trips. Um, I would actually rather stop a couple of times. But um, I want to see if I can experience what a, a, you know, a single stop road trip would be like just for, the, just for the experience of it and just for the experiment to try it, really. So we are... Uh, going up to basically we're cutting right across the country and there's a couple of things that work against us on this trip uh, first of all because we're going inland there's going to be some terrain involved so there's going to be some hilly uh, roads to drive on which is not going to be great for the range and also there's a lot of motorway type driving there's a lot of 70 mile an hour speed limits which is also going to affect the range and then, you know, we just got to try and deal with that and manage that. Now, I've run it all through a better route planner, and better route planner reckons that we can only just make it. Now, I think it's being slightly pessimistic, though, as it's given me a range of about 160 miles on a better route planner at motorway speeds, which I don't think is correct I'm sure uh, be able to get 180 190 out of it on the motorways um, and the whole journey isn't motorway as well you know there will obviously be some slower bits so I think it's been pessimistic but it does reckon that we can uh, get to the house of Dun uh, which uh, is just north of Dundee it reckons we can get there uh, non-stop and then make it back to the charger we're going to use with 5% battery left. Now that's not much, um, and it is a charge play Scotland charger, but bear with me on this. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's basically tight, let's put it that way, it is tight. And I wouldn't normally do it because hopefully you're aware of the uh, the issues we have with Charge Play Scotland and the I-Pace. Um, however, there's two things that make me feel it is possible to do it this way, uh, just as a proving run. First of all, when I put the route into a better route planner, I then went to PlugShare and checked all the chargers en route because I wanted to try and find where the old style ones and where the new style ones were. And the one that's just five miles from the House of Dunn is a new style e-volt charger which means it should work absolutely fine on the i-pace theoretically um, i've used those new style chargers four times now i've used two different ones one of them three times and one of them once and every time we've charged with no issues um, the one at brecon is a fairly new one as well it's pretty new so uh, it won't have old firmware in like that so I'm fairly confident we'll be fine with it but 
But the second thing is there's a backup charger. At Forfer, which is just a little bit south of there, there's an Instavolt charger. And Instavolt are brilliant. They're hugely expensive, but they're brilliant. And I am going to uh, use that as a backup if I need to. Now, there is a slight downside to this, in that if a better route planner is correct in its pessimism, then we actually need 101% of the battery to get to the house of Dunn, back to the charger at Brecon, and then down to the Instable, which means we can't make it. However, I'm hoping that it's going to prove to be pessimistic, as I said, and I'm hoping that we will get more range than a better route planner thinks we will. Uh, however, what I've done, just to cover myself, yes, I've done it again, spreadsheet time. Um, so, because there's not many stops, there aren't many waypoints, however, I've created a couple of artificial waypoints in a better route planner. Um, so that it will give me what my state of charge should be at those points. So if I'm if I'm lower than planned, I'll know at that point that I'm going to need to charge somewhere else. And if I'm higher than planned, I can relax and not worry about it. Uh, the first waypoint is just before Ochterada, and the reason I've gone for that that location is that I've received reports from somebody through the comments of one of my other videos uh, who says that the charger at Ochterada is brilliant, he's never had an issue and he always uses it on his iPace. So I've got a stop before there which ideally a better route planner says 51% at that point. I'm hoping to be at closer to 55% at that point. If I'm at 55% or more, then we're fine. We can make it, we can make it to the house of done without stopping, then come back to the charger at Brecon. And to be honest, even if the charger doesn't work, that extra 4% will be enough to get us down to uh, to the charger at four for the Instable. So, that's the general plan, and then on the way home, done a similar thing of a couple of waypoints but mountain. in all right. honesty and then enter the motorway. Uh, sorry so now I'm talking to me forgot to silence it uh, so yeah uh, on the way home I've done a couple of waypoints but they are uh, really just for reference sake more than anything After there's a good yards, couple of charges right and then enter um, the motorway that I know about. Towards Glasgow East. Sad to enough. Ride. Apologies. Um, now yeah. keep right and then enter the motorway. She's doing it deliberately now. Uh, so anyway, yes. So on the way home, there's a good few charges that I know the about. Motorway. There's a new... <laughs> miles. <sighs> right, she's done. Uh, there's a few insta-volts and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be fine on the way home, but I'll program the waypoints just to let me see how it's going. According to better route planner, we should get home with 4% battery. So, we'll see about that. But again, I'm hoping Follow it's being pessimistic. 16 miles. sat -nav is irritating me now. So yeah, we, uh, so that's the plan. Uh, it's a nice day, so it's dry roads, decent temperatures. Um, and as I say, it's only really the speed limits and the train that are working against me. I am going to be using the uh, adaptive cruise control. I know that's not as efficient as driving manually, but it's a long drive. I paid a lot of money for a car with um, sort of good driver assistance packages, and I want to use them. So I'm going to use it. I will be sticking to the speed limits. Now, that's one thing I did on a better route planner is I set it to... 110% of the speed limits. That might be partly the reason for its pessimism. But I've set the cruise control to do exactly the speed limit everywhere. So there's no plus 10% or anything. 70 limit, we're doing 70. Um, I've got it in eco mode, but that's it. I'm not going to be hyper myelin or any of that. You know, I know it's great and it works. I've switched the AC off, that's one thing I've done. Um, 
but just not going to be hyper mile -in. when we set off the car reckoned we had 229 miles of range but that's not based on this chunk of driving at 70 miles an hour so uh, we'll see anyway it's going to be fun and uh, hopefully we will avoid having to be taken home on the back of a truck and uh, yeah we'll hopefully have a nice time at the house of Don. it looks nice in the photograph so as usual when we get there I'll take the camera with me and give you a, just a very quick tour of what the place is like and same with the nature reserve as long as the weather holds up forecast decent as I say so fingers crossed we'll have a nice day for it um, so yeah I'll probably check in with you as we're coming up to the first waypoint to give you an update on the uh, state of charge and how that's going and in the meantime uh, I'll cut in some scenery for you to enjoy it won't be as scenic a drive today because so much of it is motorway uh, but later on we get into more countryside so uh, so yeah even but even the motorways in Scotland are scenic let's be honest okay I will talk to you later
Okay, well, we are just past the first waypoint, and uh, I don't know whether to call this good news or bad news, to be honest. Um, I've done exactly what I said, we've stuck to the speed limits rigidly, um, painfully so at times, I have to say. Um, I'm just past the first waypoint where a better route planner reckoned we would have 51%. And we passed the waypoint 51%. So, better route plan has got it spot on so far on the trip. Um, just as we passed it, it flicked down to 50, so it was it was bang on. Um, yeah, which means we are tight if it keeps up this level of accuracy. Uh, yeah, we're going to be fairly tight when we get to the other end. We're going to uh, go past the charger. Um, anyway, then on to the house of Dunn and then come back to the charger. So if push comes to shove, we can stop at the charger on the way to the house of Dunn. But then that means we do have to make a second zapping dash on the way home, which I was not planning on doing. Um, so yeah, it uh, surprised me a little bit, I'll be honest. I thought we would... Uh, when I first planned this trip about a week and a half ago, a better route plan, I was obviously working on old data and it had me at 55% at that point. Then when I looked at it again towards the end of the week, before just before we made the trip, it had revised it downwards to 51. So that was why I was kind of hoping it was being pessimistic. I was hoping the original figures were right, but I guess the revised figures are actually right. Um, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be tight. We should make it, um, but yeah, it's it's a fairly close run thing to be honest. We should get to the charger on the way back with around five percent. Um, the downside is we haven't got enough then to make it to our backup charger, <laughs> the Instavolt uh, Forfa. So if that charger doesn't work, uh, yeah, that's a bit of an issue, to be honest. Um, but I guess if that, if that comes into play, I'll put the car into low power mode, which switches off all the ancillaries um, and ra massively reduces your uh, power usage. So... If it comes to it, I'll do that. That should get us the extra mileage if we need it. Um, but in the meantime, it's just a case of keeping everything crossed. I'm hoping, uh, as we go to the house of Dunn, I know we passed the charger, but I don't know exactly where it is in relation to our route. So, uh, wow, this is pretty. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the dash cam, but we're just on a, a bridge... Uh, going over a, a river and it's very picturesque. You'll certainly be able to see the hills in front of us but I don't know if you'll be able to see the river. Very pretty. Anyway, yes, so uh, it's just a case of keeping everything crossed so fingers crossed for us, please and, uh, and let's hope we make it. It's been a, a, a nice drive so far. Uh, it's been enjoyable. I'd say the weather's lovely. The, the conditions are perfect for EV driving so... Um, I guess it's just the, the combination of the terrain and the constant motorway speeds that's kind of eaten into our, our uh, consumption a bit. But uh, but we'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Um, and on that note, I'll uh, speak to you at the next waypoint. <laughs>
Okay, well, we are still two and a half miles from the second waypoint, and we're at the percentage we're supposed to be at at the second waypoint. So, for the first time in my life, I'm trying a bit of drafting behind that truck. Um, never tried it before, but I just thought, let's see how much difference it makes. And it does actually, when you look at the consumption, it does make a surprising difference actually. Um, so all I've done is I've uh, set the adaptive cruise to the lowest gap, so one bar from the vehicle in front, um, and sat behind the truck. So, oh jeez, now there's stuff coming off the back of the truck. That's not so good. Um, but hey ho, let's stick with the truck. I think it's only water. Hope it's only water. Hope they haven't just emptied the toilets out of an aircraft or something. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's looking tight, tighter than I was anticipating. I thought they were being pessimistic, but they were slightly being optimistic. But that wasn't helped by my wife's bladder that forced us to make an unscheduled toilet stop because she had to go. <laughs> Ow. Um, so anyway, we are now drafting behind the truck. Um, we're actually doing reasonably good consumption. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's just percentage-wise, we're not quite where we need to be. Um, but yeah, we're just coming into some lower speed limits, so that will obviously help. Maybe I can get out from... Oh, damn, lights changed. Uh, I was going to say maybe I can get out from behind the truck then, but in fact, the truck's gone on without me, so... I can't be behind the truck even if I want to. So, uh, yeah, we are... As I say, still a mile and a half to go, and we're 1% under where we're supposed to be. Um, which is not good, considering we're supposed to arrive at the charger with 5%. Uh, I might end up stopping at the charger on the way there, in all honesty, because I do not want to run out. But we'll see. I really want to make this work. I really want to make this work, but I really don't want to end up phoning Jaguar Assist to get me home. <laughs> so, um, yeah, big adventure continues. I wonder where are we going to... Uh, end up? Are we going to end up making it there and back again or are we going to end up on the back of a truck? Uh, let's find out. The waypoint is one mile away and we are still at 40%. We're supposed to arrive at it with 41%. Um, so yeah, that's not ideal, but we're now in a 50 limit. I'm hoping that 50 limit continues. I've never been so grateful to see low speed limits. Um, but we'll stick with it just until we get past the waypoint, see what it flicks to. I mean, if it drops to 39 before we get there, I think we do have a genuine issue. But it's all part of the fun. This is all part of the experience. I mean, I knew when I was setting out that this was ambitious. Um, and considering some of my road trip experiences in the past, uh, maybe foolishly so, but let's give it a go. I mean, as I say, what's the worst that can happen? Please don't tell me what the worst that can happen is. I don't need to know. Um, but we are almost at the waypoint now, 150 yards, 100 yards. Oh, the cars are slowing down. 30, 20, oh no, it's just gone to 39% and we've just passed the waypoint. So we're 2% under, which means that the current consumption rate will arrive at the charger with 3%. Which is okay, if the charger works. And that's the issue, isn't it? Ooh, what do I do, what do I do? Okay, I'm going to stop recording now because this requires some serious thinking time. Really don't want to stop. Really don't want to have to stop because the car won't go any further. So I'm going to have a think about that and I will get back to you uh, 
probably as we're approaching that charger, I suspect that's the next waypoint. Um, damn stuff! Travelling with an eye pace is fun, isn't it? Okay, see you in a bit! Okay, quick update for you, um, that truck drafting that we did, we drafted a couple of trucks there on the way um, and we've hit some lower speed limits as well, so it's actually looking quite good now, the consumption's eased back a lot, um, I'm pretty surprised at how much difference drafting actually makes, I've never done it before, never tried it, heard of it. Uh, seen people do it and talk about it on YouTube but it's the first time I've actually experienced it uh, or or done it um, and yeah it, uh, it certainly seems to have made a fairly big difference um, I, 
don't have the estimates available to me right now, but I think we're actually going to end up getting there with around 11%, I think, which is back on what we were originally estimating, or what I was originally estimating uh, from the first time I planned it on ABRP with their old data. Um, so I think, I think we're good now, I think this works, and I think we've managed to squeeze enough life out of it that we can get there, then go to the braking charger, and still make it to the interval if braking doesn't work for any reason, which shouldn't be an issue, shouldn't happen. It is a new style charger, it is a fairly recent install. It's only a matter of whether it's working, I think. It should work with the Jaguar as long as it's actually physically working. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed. It's all looking a lot better. This last leg, uh, once we got away from the motorways, I mean the motorways, we were more or less on schedule. We dropped a couple of percentage points below where I really wanted to be. But now we're on schedule. Um, so yeah, uh, looking good, feeling quietly confident. Don't want to get cocky yet because we're not there. Um, but it's all looking good. Uh, countryside's lovely. I don't know if you saw it in some of the dash cam footage there, but we've uh, we've reached the east coast of Scotland now, so we've crossed the full width of the country. Um, we're now on the east coast. Uh, on the run up there, uh, before turning onto these country roads, uh, you could see quite a nice view of the ocean from out the window. And uh, and yeah, there's some rolling fields, a lot of farmland around here, so it's a lot of rolling fields and uh, and trees, which is lovely. The weather stayed nice. It's got a little bit windier now. The wind's picked up a little bit. Um, but it's not windy, and it's dry, and it's reasonably warm. Uh, well, it's not cold, uh, which is nice. So it's probably the nicest weather we've had so far on a day trip, I think. All of these road trips, it's ended up raining at some point. And so far, touch wood, uh, it's held off. So yeah, uh, we'll press on. I won't uh, be stopping off at the charger for that unplanned stop that I was a bit worried we might have to make. Just gonna keep going to the house of done and keep everything crossed that it doesn't prove to be a mistake. Okay, I'll speak to you when we're uh, just about there, I guess. Bye for now.
Okay, we appear to have made it. Um, yeah, quite painless that last bit of the journey, in fact. And the lower limits and drafting the trucks uh, were well ahead on uh, state of charge. So there's no panic. We can definitely make it back to the charger at braking. And if it's not working, we've got plenty to get us back uh, down to Forford to that Instavolt that I mentioned. So for the way home, panic's over. Certainly a better route planner um, overestimated our consumption, which is what I was hoping for. Um, so yeah, it seems to be, uh, the new data seems to be a little bit pessimistic. But then again, I did input a higher uh, speed than we were doing. We stuck to the speed limits and I told it to calculate it on the basis of doing 10% over the speed limits. So, uh, yeah, all told, it's, uh, it's worked out really well. And I think realistically, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think 200 miles would have been no issue at all there today in, in this, uh, car, if I'm honest. Um, we could have comfortably uh, done 200. So the whole uh, 160 that ABRP seemed to be working out, um, I'll have a word with them and see if they can figure out what's gone wrong. But it certainly it dropped drastically in the course of a week. It put my usage up on this route by about 5% or something. So I don't know if they took a sample from somebody that's got a very heavy right foot or whatever. But we made it here. We've arrived at the House of Dunn, um, which kind of sounds like a made-up name to me. It sounds like something out of Harry Potter or something. You shall venture to the House of Dunn, wherein thou shalt find the Stone of Eisenhower, or something. Kind of feels like that kind of place. But anyway, House of Dunn is its name, and uh, we are done. So we're here, we're going to have a wander around, we'll take you with us, we're going to have uh, a pee, because obviously my wife's bladder can't make it from an hour ago to here uh, without needing to again. But, um, but yeah, we'll get something to eat and then we'll have a wander around, we'll show you what the house is like, what the stately home and the gardens are like, and uh, see if we can find this nature reserve, if it's, I'm not sure if it's part of the grounds or if it's a drive to get there. If it's a drive, it might not be too wise, but we'll see. Um, okay, welcome to the House of Dunn. Oh, that's a madness song, isn't it? Welcome to the House of Dunn, now I've come of age. Anyway, yes, you didn't really need to hear that, did you? Okay, I'll probably get a copyright strike for that now from YouTube. Anyway, we're here. I shall see you on the inside. Bye for now. Okay, well, that seems as good a place as any to leave it for the first episode. So you've been with us for the whole trip, uh, all the way from home to our destination at the House of Dunn without stopping to charge. Uh, we did have one bathroom break, which kind of proves that the car's range exceeds the bladder's range, um, which is the important thing, let's be honest. So yeah, um, we're on our way in now, but you can join us in the next episode. And I'll show you around the House of Dunn and the gardens. You can see what that looks like. And then join us for the trip back, including the all-important charging stop, um, which should be at Brecon, but we've got the Instavolt back up in Forfar, which we can easily reach now with 50 miles of range left. So until next time, this is Abadabi Dude saying so long, take care, see you soon. Bye! Never seen a cat play fetch before. <laughs>